Two giant mobile cranes roll in with a combined lifting capacity of 800 tons. Profit. <laughs> Francesco's prepped the site for the cranes. His crews built an access bridge across the worst terrain. Now, they construct a flat work surface with crushed brick and concrete. Because when you're lifting 120 tons of solid steel, Balance and stability mean everything. The crew prepares to rig the cranes. Once the cranes are in position, each will lower the steel girder, thread it through the truss, and attach both ends to the crane with cables. Next, cutters will detach the piece. Working in total sync, the cranes will lower the piece to the ground. Each crane will support 60 tons, half the weight of the bridge piece. So the crew's loading them up with 100 metric tons of weight to counterbalance their load. Determining the exact counterweight is a critical calculation. If the balance is off, the operator could lose control of the load. With everything now in place, the cranes start lowering the steel beam. Francesco heads up to help direct the move. The crew has to thread the steel piece like a giant needle through the truss. Once the beams are in place, the operators reel in the cables until the cranes support the weight of the section. Now, the cutters can sever it with acetylene torches. They must cut through almost 40 centimeters of rusted steel at precisely determined points and do it carefully. Because there's no telling exactly how the bridge will react to losing a limb. Night starts to fall. But there's no stopping now. The bridge demolition team works into the night on their first steel lift. The torch crew burns through the last beam. So this is the moment of truth. One final cut. And the bridge holds strong. The bridge passes its first true test. After hours on edge, the team feels huge relief. Fantastic. Tomorrow, another day. <laughs> it's a victory, but a cautious one. Most of the bridge still stands. 
And as they move further down the structure, the job's only getting harder. The next morning, Francesco's back on duty, more concerned than ever about rain. We are seriously worried because of the weather. Even though today was okay, tomorrow may not be so. Water can accumulate in the canal. It could present difficulties in getting the materials through. It wouldn't take much rainfall to push the river into Francesco's work area. For a site manager, it's a disastrous prospect. But Francesco's got an ally. Massimo Valente, director of the Po River Interregional Agency in Piacenza. This rainy time of year, Massimo keeps an obsessive watch on the weather and the river levels. Upriver from Piacenza, several tributaries feed into the Po River. These tributaries gush down from the mountains 160 kilometers away. So a heavy rainfall anywhere in the region means Francesco's work site could flood two days later. That's when Massimo presents Despe with a hard choice. Work through it or evacuate their site. If the level of the river is one meter or two meter, um, no problem. For this project, if the level is uh, five meters, Evacuation. For now, the forecast is clear. So back at the bridge, the demolition's going full bore. While crushers work on the brick pillars at the north end of the bridge, the lifting team continues to quickly remove the steel truss before rainfall makes the work area impassable. For Francesco, each piece they lift is another victory in his race against the clock. Now, stage three begins. The cut-up. These hydraulically powered steel shears clamp down on the metal frame with more than 1,500 tons of cutting force. Monster blades like these can chop up a 50-ton piece of truss in less than an hour. And it won't go to waste. We're going to cut it and to send it to the steel mill. And then we are going to reuse this old metal to build the new structures of the new bridge. About 80 kilometers north, at the Denaris Dalmine steel mill, they'll recycle scrap metal from the bridge into steel tubes. Paolo Giuliano is captain of the furnace. To fit this demolition into the bucket, and the bucket that go into the furnace. Recycling steel doesn't change its physical properties. So scrap steel retains its strength and durability. In the furnace's hellacious 1,500 degrees, a one-ton bucket load of metal quickly melts to 100,000 cubic centimeters of white hot molten steel. Una sequenza lunga, ci fai un po' di 
In the continuous casting area, molds shape the steel into bars. This is steel bars. We made these bars to make tubes. The freshly cast steel bars roll down the line. where a piercer punches through them to create tubes. Many of these will head straight back to their source as building material for the new Piacenza Bridge. This is the best steel in the world. Uh, Italian steel, yes, and style. Okay. <laughs> Back at the bridge site, crushers feast away at what's left of the north end. And the last of the road deck collapses. The work is progressing, but the skies look ominous. And the team's about to tackle their biggest challenge, the section spanning the Po River. Up until this point, they've stripped and lifted from solid ground. Now, they're going to do it all on water. Every morning now, veteran demolition man Carlo Cristianelli must take a boat to his work post in the middle of the river on a floating steel platform. Freddo. Freddo. From this floating station, Carlo and his machine can rip apart the concrete roadway just as they did from land. The crews chained his excavator to the platform, so it's secure. With a cable anchoring system, the boatmen can move the platform wherever Carlo directs them. But the team's fighting strong currents, so it's slow going. And there's another setback, creating new safety hazards. A second crew is building a temporary road bridge about 80 meters downstream. This is a bridge that's basically floating on the water, made of pontoons, as you can see. To get this job done, we must collaborate with this company so both of us can work in the safest and calmest way possible. That means Francesco's team must regularly stop down while the floating bridge crew works. Delays like this raise the stakes for the demolition team. The later it gets, the greater the possibility of rain. And higher water could sink their next big lift over the river. To prepare for this overwater operation, Francesco meets with the team's chief engineer, Federico Fanti. After his half dozen lifts on land, Francesco knows a floating barge would be too unstable for a crane. Instead, they'll construct a giant floating scaffold to support the bridge from under the structure. On top of floating platforms, they'll build four metal towers, each holding a movable central beam. The crew will position the towers directly under the steel truss. 
They'll use hydraulic jacks to adjust the height of the tower's central beam so they fit precisely under the bridge. Then, the cutters will detach the piece so it rests on top of the towers. Once free, the steel platform will float the piece to shore. The next morning, the floating platforms arrive on scene. Mauro Bacchi is their owner. Vieni pure. Vai, vai. Vai ancora. Mauro's pontoons will have to hold the weight of the 120-ton bridge piece. Di più. Vieni verso qua. But he's not worried. There's no problem because my boats are very big. This man's so proud of his boats that he's named them. Invece Jennifer e Jessica. After his daughters. Big boats, like I hope my daughters will be. Big and strong. Mauro's worked on the river all his life. Like most of the crew, he knows who's boss around here. The river is in charge. 